Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. So with the Mercy and Junkrat changes, we actually wanted to ask people that have played a lot more of these heroes what they think of the changes before we give our own opinion. In fact, me and Miska haven't said anything about these changes ourselves yet, but we did want people like Crow to talk about Junkrat and stuff because we thought they'd give you better insight than we ever could with the amount of time that they spent playing these heroes. And also, as you can tell, I'm still pretty ill. Today I want to talk about Mercy and I'm going to do this with pro player Dogman. He played on Kungana and is a flex support player. What that means in particular, he'll go over it in this video but we'll talk about Mercy and all the other stuff surrounding the support category with these changes. So let's start with who are you, uh, what's your background within Overwatch not only as a player but also some of the other stuff you've done in the esports scene and also the big question Mercy as a support player where does this leave Mercy in the current meta? Hey Ryan yeah I'm uh, I'm Dogman or Dustin Dogman Bowerman and pretty much I've played under a few notable uh, professional teams or semi-professional teams uh, most recently under Kangarna as a support flex player and other than that I've done a few casts for the collegiate scene uh, to build some experience that way and eventually move on past it but to touch on uh, the mercy changes I think they're very interesting and I kind of am stuck in the middle where players like professional players like Custa talked about it where he says he's glad that mercy is out of the meta now with those changes but it's also a little bit too much so I'm on that kind of train of thought um, but I do think this allows uh, for more support heroes like Lucio to come back into the meta. So I guess we should really start with... I, I do want to talk about the Mercy changes to begin with at least because very topical right now with everything that's going on. But um, for you, where did the problem lie with Mercy? Uh, I think for the most part, everyone has uh, has agreed, at least most people in the pro scene has agreed with it, where they think that res is a mechanic that maybe should not be in overwatch and to think that this this ability as like the mercy players say, say that themselves it's kind of like a band-aid like instead of working on a better ability they just keep it in the game and make it so it, it's just something that's not very valuable anymore and i we, i just don't think that either a should be in the game anymore or B is going to be just making this one character, Mercy, just so underpowered that it just won't be worth playing here anymore. Do you think that's what's going to happen now? Yeah, probably. I can imagine. Um, what would you have changed about that? We've had some really good suggestions to do with the res being used as a sort of mini ultimate that you have to heal or do damage to increase it. Like, are there any other ideas that you would have personally? Any ideas of other people that you agreed with or...? Uh, because it seems like there's so many issues with Mercy that like Blizzard have tried to kill them all off by you know lowering the ultimate cooldown, the speed that she moves, the res amounts. It seems that they've taken all of these suggestions and just put them all through and may start to bring back bit by bit. The, I, I kind of want to just, I don't know, add a different ability or maybe just take something. Like I've already mentioned earlier, I, I think that... Res is an ability that maybe doesn't even need to be in the game. Maybe they should add something completely different to Mercy in her kit. Like, uh, I mean, I, I could just straight up rip TF2 for an example and just say an Uber Charger or something like that. But uh, I, I don't know if that's very something that that uh, that Blizzard could do. For sure. Um, to sort of talk about, let's say Mercy completely drops out of the meta. Who takes her place? Because heroes like Moira are looking really good, right? Uh, I think, yeah, heroes like Moira could potentially show up, but at the same time, uh, Lucio probably could come back into the meta. I don't know if Moira would take over that main support role because there's two support roles in professional play. There's either flex support and main support. And the main support player is the, the person that's doing either A, a lot of the healing or a lot of the peeling and generally playing a lot around the team a lot more. Uh, whereas the support flex player is more of a, of a role that also contributes to DPSing or has a lot of heal potential and... Um, it's just a lot more mechanical, straight mechanical ability. So I think on the side where Mercy was at was the main support role. So when she gets replaced, it'll probably go back to the Lucio role if people are still going to be playing dive. Um, but but I could see Moira potentially coming out on maps where it doesn't matter if you have speed or if your uh, other support needs peels on like maps such as 2CP. I guess Sombra already takes over there, but that that could be a potential. Yeah, what, what heroes come under each role 
real quick because you said the sort of Messi and Lucy are the main supports. Where does that? I'm guessing Anna and Zen are the flex supports as well. Yeah, under the. Or are there any sort of crossover hybrid kinds of hate? heroes there. Yeah, Mercy Mercy was definitely one of those heroes. Mercy was the sort of crossover between if you were a support flex player or a main support player. Um, but definitely Lucio is a staple uh, hero for the main support role because pretty much for a year in professional play, Lucio was the only hero that you got to play as a main support player. So you get to see really talented Lucio players in other roles that didn't get a flex over, but they just got to play uh, Lucio for the entire time, whereas you have in the support flex section, we have heroes like you mentioned, Anna, Zenyatta, uh, even Moira is, that, like you mentioned, is a support uh, flex hero, so it's a little bit harder for main supports to be able to run her. Generally, when it comes to playing support, there are a lot of people that do it, a lot of people that really like playing the Annas and Zens and Moiras of this world at this point now as well. What heroes would you recommend playing currently? It's a bit of an interesting time to be playing support, mind, but if somebody was going, I play a lot of tanks and DPS and I want to pick up another support, what would you recommend and how would you recommend them going about learning them as well? Uh, it's a bit different for me, I think, from my perspective. I think if you want a more general like DPS and positioning factor without that much aim, um, although I, I guess it's kind of controversial to say that, but I think that Zenyatta would be a hero I'd recommend if you, were maybe, if you want to swap over from maybe like Genji or something projectile related. Whereas when I when I swapped to Anna or when I when I first started playing support flex, he was the hero or excuse me, she was the hero that I, I wanted to to really get to master because her kit feels so good. Like there's so much you can do in Anna that you could like, I felt like I had like unlimited potential. Whereas on Zenyatta, like his, his potential is all in your positioning and your aim. So I think uh, to touch, to lead into your second question, uh, with with how to learn and how to play these characters in comp, I think that you have to go to each character with a different mindset. I think with Anna, you can do as much risky stuff. You can throw your sleep dart as much as possible. You can use your grenade as much as possible. Maybe get those timings and understand uh, your limitations. But on Zenyatta, I think it's more important to focus on general positioning and overall... Um, just understanding what to do, but I, I don't think that uh, a hero like Moira would be a good hero for a lot of DPS players to switch over to. I guess we could talk about Anna real quick as well. She's a hero that's recently been buffed a little bit. She's had a rise in popularity. Were those changes enough? Do you feel like she needs a little bit more in her kit? And it seems that so long as Winston and Diva are the main tanks to fight against, she's always going to struggle. So what can be done about that, I suppose? Huh, I think at least for Anna, uh, I don't, I, I haven't given it too much thought to be honest because I've kind of, I've, along with like a, a similar mindset of a, of a well-known player that you guys have talked to before, Tavik, he also like uh, is pretty relaxed on pretty much every situation because it's like if you really like a hero, that's fine, you, I, you understand it, but it's like you don't always need a specific hero to be meta if you want to be good at the game right like i could play zen or play Anna and i could still be happy i like playing support flex but um for anna it's hard to to give any suggestions because i think she's in a pretty decent spot right now like yes she's not overpowered and yes she's not underpowered i think she's in a pretty balanced spot so it's kind of hard to say that I, i'd give her any buffs or uh, or nerfs as a, one of like the staple support players around, what mistakes do you see coming from a lot of people when you play ladder, or even when you know you watch the collegiate series and sort of try to provide that analytical role? What kind of common mistakes do you see people making, even at the highest tiers, that people should really be avoiding? Uh, I think uh, at least as a player that um, that gets very frustrated at my enemy team. You know how you know how most people like get frustrated at their team because they're you know they're dumb or whatever. And then I I focus on like myself and also the person I'm playing against. So whenever I'm playing against a really dumb player, I just always hate their position because it's like I'm trying to like when I when I go into a comp game, I'm trying to learn and trying to focus on like playing against the best hero, my ideal opponent. And then I have this like really dumb person just come up and do some stupid flank or just constantly put a lot of pressure on the front line and only focus me. I think that it's best to, I, I guess for players that are already trying to improve and maybe have a harder time 
uh, getting over the hump at GM, I think it's worth like um, trying to understand your, your fears, I guess, because there is certain people that probably have problems with playing against like pro players or something like that, where I, I think that they get nervous or something like that. I don't know what this was about, but I remember this being spoken about before where it was particularly about fighting games and the idea of if you're playing against a pro in Tekken and they play Eddie, Eddie's the only hero I can think of at the top of my mind, and you put too much pressure on that, you need to remember that you've played against Eddie hundreds of times already, and they, whilst this might be a better player at it, you know how to deal with that playstyle or whatever. So if you go to a good Genji, you still apply the same techniques to counter them as you would any other Genji, really. Right. So maybe not putting them on that pedestal kind of helps in that situation. Yeah, and I think that besides just for pro players, I think that matters at least in the collegiate scene or, or any scene really. Like it doesn't matter if you're closer to your LSR like uh, season high or you want to breach past a certain level. Um, and you know, you may be getting nervous at that point, but always try to remember the basics and continue to think in the moment. So if like some people might get carried away with that and instead start thinking about like, I, I don't know, just generally what could happen if they fail or whatever. It's just a matter of thinking uh, in, in the moment and not getting carried away. That kind of goes onto a good question with playing supports. How much of it is to do with mentality? Um, I think, at least for, for me, I've always been a person that's favored players that have um, good aim. At least for me, I've always really enjoyed watching players that have been pretty insane with their aim. Not specifically players like Reed Jahung or Jay Jonak, but players more like uh, Hogopion because there's people that I personally relate to with my aim style because I have more of a, a, a like a hyper sense, hyper sensitive, hyper active aim style, I guess. It's like me, me and Calvin talked about this before, but we both aim in a very similar way where we both flick a lot. And I've kind of always liked or, or favored players that had that aim style over others until more recently where I've I've been more understanding of people like Chipsygen, which have more of a slow and a more methodical and higher sense and higher DPI sort of aim style that provides them very consistent gameplay. Um, so it's like a matter of, of mixing both that have, uh, that have intrigued me. And I think the mentality... Uh, of being a support flex player is definitely the most important. You uh, certainly see you from the outside and just get the impression of the podcasts that you do with the pro, the uh, sort of color casting that you've done with the collegiate series, that you are a player that is very focused on the methodical side of it. Are there any other things that you really want to stress when it comes to playing supports or any role at all? I remember you said before, like we started that. You have a lot of focus on that side of it, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think uh, at least we, we talked about it before uh, we started. But um, one of the one of the main things that I've had to to think about recently, at least when playing Zenyatta, um, is when you're playing against a tracer, uh, which is obviously most games at this point because tracer is so meta. Um, but one of the things that I try to focus on, at least when playing against a, a good tracer or any tracer really, is constantly thinking about our positioning and what where I should put myself against that tracer. So if I, excuse me, if I think the tracer just respawned and I'm always looking at her respawn time, I know where she'll be because I'll always be looking around my corners or guessing where she's at, and I'll probably, if you want, if you're a more communicative player in your in competitive environment or even if you're in a um, amateur team. Uh, you, it's always worth po asking your teammates where the tracer is or constantly th telling your teammates where you think the tracer is. And then you can kind of get a feel of where tracers go, their pathings. And then once you start playing against uh, more tracers or you or you start to get the grasp of um, where good tracers go and in, in the, that typical route, then you'll feel more confident going into the things or into matches and playing against tracers and you'll just understand more. Uh, of what they'll do and it, 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 there's like a, a, a saying for it it's better to be practiced than unprepared i mean i, I don't think that's a, a saying but there's a specific saying for it is it like sort of fail to prepare prepare to yeah fail, yeah that the, kind of stuff. exactly yeah that's that kind of same guidelines for sure and i guess finally to finish on are there any golden tips that you can think of when it comes to playing all across the support roles with everything that's happening right now 
And just any closing thoughts on the Mercy Bear, where this is going to leave? Is this the end of Mercy Rally? And finally, finally, where can people find more from you if they want to see some high tier pro level support playing? For your first question, for um, general tips for support players overall, um, I think it's worth keeping an open mind. Uh, a lot of support players don't like playing Mercy, and a lot of them don't really want to, didn't want to give her a chance. Uh, you know, in, in the pro meta, which is totally understandable. She's sometimes not uh, as engaging of a character for a lot of people. Uh, but for me, at least, I, I went, I came into it with an open, open mind. So going into uh, maps like Koth, where I play her a lot more, it was more fun trying to understand um, who the heal priority is and what who I need to be going after. So, for instance, I would go up to heal my Farah, but. In a fair mercy composition, you really want to keep your tanks alive. They're the main priority for your team. So it's a matter of understanding who to heal and what your priority is in each different role. And once you understand that, keeping a grasp of uh, that general playstyle and building off of it. The mercy meta. Um, I guess I touched on it just there, right? I think that you know, as sad as it is that the mercy meta probably will be fading out and we're probably going to more heroes such as Lucia for the main support role. Um, she could potentially still be viable uh, with fair mercy compositions, but I also feel like fair mercy compositions will kind of fall out of favor because mercy's mercy might be so bad now. Um, and even in the past, she wasn't as good on Koth as she is on other maps, so it potentially could be disastrous for a lot of players um but uh closing thoughts are, are that i think i just it, it's sad but at the same time you know moving on two different meta at this point and um if you're a mercy player learn other roles and maybe try or it, it'd be best for you to learn other roles if you want to climb higher in the ranks i think um but to close out uh you can find me on uh twitter at dogmanow Twitch, W 2 I think, uh, could change soon. And then I have uh, my podcast, Ultimate Vantage, which runs on my YouTube channel, uh, and SoundCloud, at Ultimate Vantage, and Dogman OW for my YouTube. Um, but yeah, awesome. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate you for having me on this. Uh, I, I'm glad you reached out to me to come on. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Do check out all of Dogman's stuff in the description below. Very, very good said yeah, a player. So it's definitely worth checking him out. And let us know what you think of the Mercy changes and what support heroes are going to come back in popularity. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.